Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Subscribe today and get exclusive member content, in-episode credit, and fun Off the Cuff merchandise. Happy Halloween, everybody, and welcome to Off the Cuff. Oh, I love Halloween, especially when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, we would rush home after school, get into our costumes, and we'd be off, and we'd canvas the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. And the object was to get as much candy as humanly possible. I mean, really. I mean, I think sometimes I had five, six pounds of candy. Now, not all of them were my favorite. Some I would give away to my mother and father that I didn't like, especially licorice or taffy, because it stuck to my teeth. I wasn't a big fan of that. Now, we all had our favorite candy, which means at the end of the night, you know, we'd, we'd swap and trade with our friends, and I had my list. And here's some of my favorites. Uh, let's see, um, M&M's. Loved M&M's. Peanut or plain. They didn't have peanut butter back then. Uh, also, Chunkies. Oh! Remember the Chunkies? They were big, they were square. Those were fantastic. Uh, Milky Way, Three Musketeers. See, to me, it didn't matter. They were both about the same. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, oh baby. Also, Snickers, and of course, my all-time favorite, Butterfingers. Incidentally, Butterfingers were my mom's all-time favorite, and she'd always keep a box of the small ones or a bag of the small ones in the kitchen. Yeah. It was a race to see who got to more of them, me or her. I usually won. So today, in the spirit of Halloween, I'm going to share with you how to make a homemade, sugar-free, delicious Butterfinger. Yeah. And after Food Facts, a surprise. I'm going to share how to make homemade, sugar-free gummy bears. Oh, baby. Yeah, you're going to love it. And now, another surprise. I grew up in East Meadow, New York, and I found out today that a neighbor of mine from the 60s and 70s has moved out here. Yep, and she's here today. Come on, follow me back here. Yeah, 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 come back. This is not a device for editing. Come on. No editing tricks. Just my neighbor from the old neighborhood in East Meadow. Mrs. Twitchell, come on in. Oh, hello, <laughs> hello. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's been such a long time. How have you been? I've been busy moving from Long Island. You know, when we were kids, I remember going down the street and waving to you on your porch, and you waved back to us, brew in hand. I don't think I ever told you this, uh, uh, but but we made you a big part of our Halloween. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're such a cute kid. Oh. <laughs> Cute and chubby. Well, I'm still cute and chubby. <laughs> still chubby. And cute. If you insist. Well, truth is, you really loved candy. Ugh, guilty as charged. I mean, you would train for Halloween like it was an Olympic sport. Mark Spitz, eat your heart out. <laughs> I mean, you were the biggest candy bag on the block. You did the same houses four or five times. I mean, you're tricky, tricky, tricky. <laughs> you had more costume changes than Cher. I was very theatrical. <laughs> I mean, by the end of the night, you'd have so much candy. I was the Willy Wonka of Maple Avenue. It's really it's a wonder your teeth didn't rot away. Oh, I had that dentist, Dr. Linder. Oh, whatever happened to him? He retired and bought a Pacific Island. Hmm, good for him. Named it after me, Craig's Island. Hmm. Hmm. Guess what? Hmm. I brought pictures of the old neighborhood. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Here's a picture of my house. It's changed a bit since then. Yeah. Now here's a picture of your house. Oh, I didn't have the heart to sell it. Wait a minute, it's still there? Oh yes, it's my summer home now. Well, that was ancient in 1968. <laughs> so was I. You know, come to think of it, 
You haven't aged a bit. You look amazing. Oh, well, you know, I eat well and I don't smoke. And I use those beauty products that Dr. Phil's wife sells at the end of his show. She holds up better than stucco. <laughs> oh, Agatha loves Dr. Phil. Agatha? Yes, my cat. Your cat? Wait, yes. How can that be? She, she'd be over 60 by now. <laughs> I feed her that all natural food that Rachel Ray sells on her show. It's probably that. The power of daytime television. Anyway, I have kind of a confession. The reason why you were such a so central to our Halloween was because when we were young, you know, we 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 you know. And what is it? Go on, we're old friends. Well, the reason why you were center of our Halloween is because you know you had that house and the cat and the broom and the, we thought you were a witch. <laughs> Witch. <laughs> Let me share something with you, dear. Do you remember when you fell in with those rough and nasty hooligans? The ones with the pocket protectors and the glasses? The chess club. They were rough. Nasty little heathens. Well, I know that you all pelted my house with eggs one year. You do? Now, if I was a witch, I could say... Hocus Pocus! Wave my hands and you would smash eggs all over your head. That's ridiculous. That's impossible. That would make you a witch. <laughs> oh, oh, I... Oh. I have... Egg all over me. Here, wipe it off. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Twitchell, hmm. I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? We'll call it evening. <laughs> Agatha! I'm coming home! <laughs> Mrs. Twitchell? <laughs> Here are the ingredients. Here are... <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Twitchell. Uh, here are the ingredients for our sugar-free Butterfingers. First off, one and a third cups of crushed pork rinds. Yep, that's right. Crushed pork rinds or pork skins. Three quarters of a cup of powdered urethritol. One teaspoon cream of tartar. One quarter cup heavy cream. One half teaspoon vanilla extract. One half cup unsalted butter one quarter cup sun butter, and 10 ounces sugar-free chocolate chips, we're going to melt those, and one tablespoon of coconut oil. Now for the gummy bears. One small packet of sugar-free jello, that's 0.3 ounces. Two and a half teaspoons or one packet of gelatin. One tablespoon of powdered urethritol, and one third cup of water. First up, we're going to grind up our pork rinds. Yes, you can go out and you can buy pork panko, but uh, grinding them up is uh, more fun and cheaper. So here, I need one and one third cup. I don't think this is going to be enough. No problem. <sighs> Thank goodness for warehouse doors. Okay, let's open our pork rinds. Yeah, Tampa proof. That's just what I like in my pork rinds. 20 minutes later, I have it open. Okay, let's pour it in. I'm really not sure how much is going to make uh, one and a third cups, but we're just gonna have to try it out. And don't worry about the noise. I have the world's first silent food processor. Watch. You see? You can't hear it. This is awesome. Okay. There's your homemade pork panko. Let's measure it. Perfect. It was more than enough. Here's my cup and a third of pork panko that I ground myself. Excellent. Hey, look what I have left over. Yeah. It's perfect because I'm making meatloaf later, and this is an excellent substitute for breadcrumbs. 
And now, the scariest part of any Halloween. <laughs> Making brown butter. Don't worry, it's easy. Set the heat to medium high and take your half cup of butter, place it in there. You're just going to, you know, move this around and let it melt naturally. And really, the only trick with brown butter is not to let it burn. Okay, it's all melted now. Now we're just going to stir because you don't want it to burn. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, the, the nutty flavor is great. The burnt flavor is bad. We're just about there. I would say we're probably one or two minutes away. Keep stirring. There we go. There's the luscious brownness. If you can see right in the middle there, there's your brown bits. Put in our sugar. That that's our, I just splatted in all the sugar. Let it melt in. <laughs> a quarter cup of heavy cream. I took it off the heat just a little bit. Don't want it to get too hot. Oh, I missed I missed one ingredient, the vanilla. Oops. Better late than never. Wait, I forgot another ingredient. I'm out of practice. <laughs> the cream of tartar has to go in. Oh boy. Okay. Hey, look, it's it, it, it's in, and it's not too late. That's that's the secret to any any dish. Just don't do it too late. Now it's time for the sun butter. If I didn't mention it before, sun butter is sunflower seed butter, and uh, I'm not sure why this recipe requires it. Although I'm going by the recipe, apparently it's probably a less Invasive taste and helps this taste more like a Butterfinger. Now in goes the pork panko. The panko is being used here to actually create the texture of a Butterfinger without the carbs. And when I first read the recipe, I, I thought it was unusual. But the thing is, um, pork rinds, plain pork rinds, can you can add a lot of flavor to them. So, okay, let's go with that. Believe it or not, now we're ready to fill our molds. That's right. Okay, here is our mixture. Here is our mold. Let's, uh, I don't know how to do this cleanly, but I'll do the best I can. Okay, that wasn't so bad. All right, this is not turning into the disaster I thought it was. It's not... Uh, super neat right now but it's getting the job done now after we fill this up it's going to go into the freezer for the hour okay after some manipulation okay after some manipulation there we go that's about as clean as I can get it now off to the freezer while everything is in the refrigerator and freezer, now we cheat. We're going to melt the chocolate chips in the microwave. Shh. First, we're going to do 30 seconds, just chips. Then we're going to add coconut oil, 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds until we have the right texture. Here goes the first 30. You can see it's getting that nice, glossy look. Oh yeah, there's still a chunk of coconut oil in there. So I'm going to go a little bit more, maybe 30 seconds more. We should be done now. Let me see. Yes, we is done. That's what we want. Now it's time to make our Butterfingers. Here are our Butterfingers. They came, these are all frozen. Drop them in the chocolate. Let it drip off a bit. And right there. Four at a time. What the beeswax. All right. Every time I make candy like this, I feel like I feel like Lucy from that episode of I Love Lucy when she's in the candy factory. 
except I won't be stuffing these down my shirt. I will be stuffing these down my hungry gullet. Two. There's three. And all of them made it. Yay. Okay. Now I'm going to slide these into the freezer for about a half hour to an hour. And then we shall feast. Okay. In about an hour, we're going to have some sugar-free Butterfingers. Now it's time to do those gummy bears. But first, it's time for a spooky edition of Food Facts. The Butterfinger was invented in 1923 by Otto Schneering. In 1916, he was a piano salesman. He took $100 of his money and he formed a candy company. He named it after his mother's middle name, Curtis. You've heard of that, the Curtis Candy Company. Otto's first hit actually came in 1920 with the Baby Ruth Bar. And you know, there was some controversy because people weren't sure if it was named after the baseball player, Babe Ruth, or if it was named after Grover Cleveland's daughter, Baby Ruth. Uh, we still don't know, and we may never know, but at five cents a piece, it was a smash. Then in 1923, the Butterfinger was a hit. To promote it, they actually dropped it from an airplane over several selected cities in the United States. <laughs> They did the same thing with the Baby Ruth bar. Uh, that's actually the plane they used for the Baby Ruth bar. I guess they probably took the Baby Ruth off and put Butterfinger. Anyway, Butterfinger was a smash and it fell from the heavens. I always knew it was heavenly. Aww. Ever wonder how the Butterfinger got its name? Well, they actually held a contest to name the candy bar. Now, Butterfinger is a sports term that started in the 20s about an athlete or a ball player who is very clumsy, you know, Butterfingers. Well, the winner was a self-described klutz from Chicago, and he chose the name, and it stuck. And today, we have, well, Butterfingers. In the 1930s, the biggest movie star on the planet was none other than Shirley Temple. So adorable, yeah. Now, did you know that Butterfinger was one of the first product placements in movies ever? Yep. And thanks to Shirley, she featured the Butterfinger in her 1934 movie, Baby Take a Bow. Here, watch. <laughs> and Shirley, mm -hmm. now look at what I've got for you. Ooh, thank you, Uncle Larry. Now what are you gonna give me? A gift. In 1964, Butterfinger was purchased from Curtis by Standard Brands. They held it until 1981 when Nabisco bought the Butterfinger. Then in 1990, Nestle bought the Butterfinger, yep, and it's still there today. First, Butterfinger had a celebrity endorsement by Shirley Temple in 1934. Then in 1988, they got even a bigger celebrity, yep, none other than Bart Simpson, with the famous saying, nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. The ad campaign was very, very successful. It lasted 25 years until 2013. And now it's time for some Butterfinger trivia. At Nestle's main plant in Franklin Park, Illinois, they make over 10 million Butterfingers per day. Yeah, I know what you're asking. What is it in a year? Well, I gotta figure this out. All right, I haven't memorized. It's 1,626,000,000 Butterfingers a year. Yeah, just shy of what I eat. Speaking of the Simpsons, and their 25-year association with Butterfinger, did you know that Milhouse made his debut in a Butterfinger commercial? I had no idea. Fun size or bite-sized Butterfingers became commercially available around 1970. However, due to a lawsuit by the Mars Company, nobody could call it fun size until 1998. Well, since then, it's fair game. But let's face it, any Butterfinger, any, is fun size. Now let's wrap this up with some gummy bear trivia. The gummy bear was actually invented in 1922 by Hans Riegel. There he is. He, uh, he was the uh, founder of the 
Haribu Company, which is, of course, still around and making gummy bears today. Gummy bears were originally named Dancing Bear Treats. They were named after live dancing bears that apparently toured in shows around that time in the United States. Now, nobody knows for sure what show they were named after. However, at the Clark Trading Post in Lincoln, New Hampshire, they still have live dancing bear shows. Yeah, no wonder they've been calling me. If you're a fan of the Haribu gummy bears, you may not know this. Their colors don't always align with their flavor. As an example, the green gummy bears taste like strawberry. The clear ones taste like pineapple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's a problem for you, um, eat them with your eyes closed. A couple of years ago, fashion designers replicated an Alexander McQueen dress and made it out of 50,000 gummy bears. Look at that. <laughs> Does Lady Gaga know about this? And finally, if you have $150 burning a hole in your pocket and you have an internet connection, you can buy yourself a 26 pound gummy bear. Look at that. Yeah, it's green, so you know it's strawberry. <laughs> oh man, who says you can't buy love? And that's Food Facts. And now, while our main course hardens to the Butterfingers, it's time for the gummy bears. And that's going to be pretty easy thanks to these gummy bear molds. Oh yeah, daddy's prepared. Let's go. We start with our third cup of water. Now goes in the gelatin. I'm using raspberry. It's in. Well, actually, this is jello. This is the gelatin. This is unflavored. And to make it a little extra sweet, a tablespoon. This is a tablespoon of urethritol. Now we stir well to incorporate this. Okay, it's incorporated. You cook over a low heat. You don't boil this. So I'm using medium to low right now. Now, once we're done mixing this together, we have to get into the molds right away or else it would harden and it's going to make it a little bit tough to do. Okay, I told you I was going to do a different flavor. Now we're going to do some orange. I think it works better when I go above it like this. Yeah, we're going to do some orange. Some orange gummy bears. I got where I can do seven at a time. This way we have some variety in our bears. Orange, love, love orange. Even though this is gonna be, oh, I think it, it's fair to say it's gonna be artificially flavored, but uh, I actually licked the spoon and this tastes really good. I can't wait till this is ready. Oh boy, almost done. Here we go with the, oh, I missed one up there. The last row of orange gummies. Okay, there's orange. I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator too. And now I'm ready to celebrate Halloween with sugar-free, guilt-free, treats the butterfingers which look more like butterfinger fun size and the gummy bears oh boy i can't decide which to try first all i can tell you is the butterfingers freeze well so you're making a whole batch and you can have them for as long as you want these store well as well i will say i use the small molds i guess there are bigger molds for the gummy bears so they're more like the ones you buy uh, in the store and next time and there will be a next time I will get the bigger ones. So which one do I try first? Let's leave the Butterfingers for the grand finale. Let's try the gummy bears. Now I'm sure you notice that I have yellow and orange gummy bears. I made in the show, I made raspberry and I made uh, orange. Well, I made a mistake with the raspberry. The, the, as you saw in the ingredients, it's 0.3 ounces of jello. I used three ounces, so they 
really didn't stick together. So I, I whipped up the uh, lemon ones so I'd have uh, a variety. And so I'm gonna try the orange first. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take a whole, I just dropped two. And my cat's, oh, I can't, can't you can't have that. My cat can't have a urethritol. Okay, so here I go, the orange. Wow, the flavor bursts into your, mm. You know how you get that tingling in cheek when you eat something citrusy? Wonderful. The mouth waters. Mmm. Really satisfying. And again, you can't tell. It doesn't have regular sugar. Let's try the lemon. Oh yeah, the lemon. Same thing. A little tartar, of course. More tart. Chewy. Delicious. Like I said, next time I'm getting the bigger mold, the Butterfingers. Now, the bar is really high for these because I really love Butterfingers. But I have a feeling that this is going to be wonderful because I kind of tasted the insides when I was making. Okay, so here we go. My first ever sugar-free homemade Butterfinger. Crunches in the middle. Wow! You taste, it crunches like the real one does. The chocolate is sweet and savory, uh, not savory, but luscious, that's the word. The inside is salty with a hint of like a peanut butter taste, but it's, it's let, you know, it must be the sun butter. It's just, wow. Oh! It crunches just like a, just like a butterfinger. Mmm, this is wonderful. Oh my, I could eat forty of these. I really could. One more. I'm gonna show you the cross section. Mmm. Oh man, that's what it looks like. Pork rinds. You don't taste pork. You taste Butterfinger. What a genius recipe. Kudos to whoever came up with it. Oh. Mmm. Halloween dance. Yeah. Happy Halloween, everybody. If you make these recipes, I know you're going to be really, really happy. And that's it for this time. See you again in about two weeks. And remember, be well, eat good. On the next all-new episode of Off the Cuff, you'll never guess what I'm making. A keto, low-carb version of Chicken Florentine. Then brace yourselves. Chicken and cheese and spinach. It's a great... Whoa! Whoa! Is that an earthquake? It's my next-door neighbor, Pluto. My doorknob. Yeah. Just go ahead and build a new door around that. Slap a little paint on it. You'll be good to go. On Food Facts, we learned that the original name for spinach is quite a mouthful. Uh, it was called a Sputnik. It was called Keto Chicken Florentine. It looks fantastic. It's delicious. Join me for Off the Cuff Healthy Cooking with Craig Mitchell. Alternate Sundays at 7.30 p.m. right here on Strong 